Hello friends and followers. Welcome back to Phoenix Studios. I'm Phoenix. Thank you for tuning in to the eighth video in a 10 part series on drawing for beginners. Today we will be covering the basics of a single vanishing point composition in perspective. At the beginning of the video, you will notice I sketched a value scale. This is something I encourage you to do at the beginning of your drawing sessions when you are first getting started in drawing. It's a great warm up for your hand, your creative process, and your mind body connection in regards to creating artwork. So, what we're working on here today is a single point perspective with a, with a single vanishing point. The first thing I did is I sketched out the horizon line. I just picked a point on the paper somewhere in the middle of the page. Just for this example, you can always move that around. And I just drew a straight line using a ruler and I picked a point on there that's gonna be known as our vanishing point. And what that means in this case is that's our line of sight of this composition and that's where the lines in this drawing will all converge at that singular vanishing point. They will seem to get smaller and smaller as they go further and further away from us. And this will help to put our drawing into perspective. So I, I sketched out the shape of a square and then I connected the two corners that are facing us to the vanishing point. And then I just chose a random point and I connected those two lines using a line that is parallel to that front corner of our square. That's how our, I would see this in perspective. And now I'm just erasing out those lines so it's a little less confusing. And what you'll see is we've got the front end of a cube and one side. And this is what we can see when the cube is right on the horizon line, meaning it's level with our eye level. So that line that goes across the back with the vanishing point sits on, that is our horizon line. That, that basically represents the eye line of the viewer. And so that's what you would be looking at. As you work on this sketch and all the sketches you do, just remember to be patient with your drawings. These techniques do take time and a lot of practice to grasp. Also, keep in mind that these are just sketches and they are for practice. Therefore, they do not need to be perfect. Now, some of the reasons we want to learn and understand perspective is so that we can add realism and three dimensionality to our artwork. So what I'm doing here now is I've gone up and above that horizon line. So therefore up and above the eye line of the viewer. What I want to create here is the illusion that we're looking up at this cube. This cube is suspended in space or we're just much smaller than it, but I want to create that illusion that we're looking up. So I move it up and above that horizon line. And then I basically continue the same process of sketching out the square, connecting the corners to the vanishing point of the sides that would appear to our eye. And that's what I'm doing here now. You'll notice on the first cube, there were just two corners I had to connect, but this one, because it's up above us, we're seeing more of it. So we had three corners to connect. And then now I'm just gonna make these lines. These lines do not converge and go to the vanishing point. So they are gonna run parallel to the lines on the front of that cube. And I'm just erasing these lines so that it doesn't get overly complicated. Helps separate it in space and you're able to see it a little bit better. 
to remove my eraser shavings here, I'm just using a fan brush. You could use, you know, a fan brush or something similar. It just helps me from blowing on it and getting a bunch of moisture all over the picture or wiping it with my hand and then smudging the picture. It's just, I've, I've found that it's easier to use a little brush like similar to the one I'm using in this video. I'm just darkening up these edges so you can see them a little bit on camera. They, they came out a little lighter than I would have liked. When we're drawing realistic scenes, it's important for us to learn how to effectively communicate a sense of depth and space. We attempt to trick the viewer's eye into believing and seeing a three-dimensional space on what they know to be a two-dimensional piece of paper. Now, what I'm doing here is I also wanted to demonstrate how to draw a cube that we're looking down upon or what people may refer to as a bird's eye view. So this one, I drew the square below the horizon line in this case. And now I'm going to continue the same process that we did in the previous two cubes, just using my ruler. And when you do these at home and when you practice these sketches, you don't always need to use a ruler. You can just kind of, you know, they're just for practice. You kind of put up your horizon line, you put out a vanishing point, and then you start sketching in your shapes and just rough in those lines that proceed off to the vanishing point. Now I would recommend possibly, you know, for your first couple examples, go ahead and use a ruler because it will help you get that basic fundamental understanding of what's taking place when these lines are vanishing off to that point. But after a while, you'll be able just to, when you're doing sketches, just go ahead and leave that ruler to the side. Just wanted to kind of show and give a demonstration on how it's done with the ruler. And now I'm just erasing those lines so they don't get confusing here. And, and so there you've got your three shapes. You've got one shape that is right on the horizon line. The viewer is looking directly at that shape. Then you've got one shape that's above the horizon line that we're looking up at it. We're beneath that shape or below it. And then you've got the third shape where we're up above that. And that could mean that we're up in a tall building looking down on something. It can mean that, you know, we're all in space and we're hovering above this object. It's below us somehow. This could be, you know, this could be a train. This could be a, a freight shipping container that's on a train and we're up in this building and we're looking down on it. That's how you can kind of perceive this. But it just creates that illusion of there's an object at our level, there's an object above us, there's an object below us, and it cre really creates that illusion of depth and space. Virtually everything in the natural world can be simplified or grouped into essentially four basic two-dimensional shapes. The square, the triangle, the circle, and the rectangle. All other shapes can be constructed using these. But when we add a third dimension to these shapes, we create the illusion of form in our drawings. A circle can become a sphere or a cylinder, and a triangle morphs into a cone. In this example, a square becomes a cube. Now what I did is, is I went ahead and used some of the techniques we've learned in the previous videos and I determined my light source was going to be coming from the upper left corner and that way I could go ahead and throw a little bit of shadows and shading onto these pieces just really quick to kind of help even further create that illusion of depth and space. So now that I know that the light source is up and, and to the left, that meant that my shadow edge and my darkest edges of the shape would be on these sides that you see me shading in now. So I'm just going ahead and laying in some, some basic shading. I'm not even 
going to become close to getting carried away with this or you know really getting involved like some of the previous videos this is just some rough rough shading rough values just to kind of create that illusion of depth and space a little bit better and so i'll just throw in some shading in various spots When you are able to depict perspective accurately in your drawings, you powerfully communicate the illusion of realism. And this exercise, like all the other exercises we do, you'll want to practice this repeatedly, and that's how you'll continue to improve. Practice makes progress. You'll notice when you're doing perspective drawings that some objects will appear smaller or even diminish in size as their distance from the viewer increases. For those of you, you know, interested in the fundamentals of perspective, which I'm sure everyone who's made it this far in the video must be, this, to become more familiar with the fundamentals and the terms of perspective, that phenomenon is known as diminution. Also, lines or edges of objects, which are in reality parallel to each other, will appear to come together or even converge as they get further and further away from the viewer. This is known as convergence. You'll also see that the position that refers to the fixed position of the viewer's field of vision and therefore making it possible to do a perspective drawing is known as the line of sight. There are actually an infinite number of directions a line of sight can take by merely moving your eyes or turning your head slightly. But to draw a scene in perspective, you've got to limit that direction to just one line of sight. And the line of sight creates an eye-level view of the scene, basically. In the upcoming videos, we will begin discussing two-point perspective. I do want to mention, don't forget to stay tuned for the giveaway taking place at the end of the 10-part series. In order to enter, make sure you subscribe to the channel and post a comment under the 10th video in the series explaining one thing you learned from this series that helped you artistically. I will select one random comment to win a free kit of beginner's art supplies. So I'm still continuing to add shading. As you'll notice, I'm using some of the techniques that we covered in the previous videos. Right here, I'm adding a cast shadow to this object. Uh, I'm not really going for anything specific or making this, you know, a, a nice, beautiful, finished drawing. Just showing you how you can add some of these different elements that we've learned from the previous videos all together and incorporate them into this drawing. We've, you know, taken the elements of the basic 2D shapes and the way that we hold the pencil. We've put some shading in here. We've used some perspective. And really just something for you to have fun with and try out some of these different techniques. Like I said, in the next video, we'll, we'll begin making things really interesting with some two-point perspective. And I decided here to put in something just to give a little more idea how this perspective and vanishing point can be used. But the, the example I'll use here is let's, let's say that this was a train. It was on some tracks and it had some freight cars on it. So the cube that's closer to us, that's, you know, obviously that's going to appear in one perspective because, you know, it's closer to the viewer. And as that line of cars goes away towards the vanishing point, we can actually use those same parallel lines or those, those vanishing lines that go off 
we can use those to sketch in the next car in the train. And because we're using that vanishing point and we're using, you know, this, this perspective the way that we are, it will give the illusion that that train car is further away, which is exactly what we want. And now it's your turn. Go create something.